Our guests in studio from Main Street Martinsburg, Robbie Blair and Raven Lamp. Robbie, Raven, good morning to both of you. Good, good to be here. And along with you is Barry Swift as well. Uh, Barry was here last year, one of the sponsors for some of the events that you put on. Barry, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. It's great to have you. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Let's talk, Robert. Let's do it's it. It's going to be that time of the year. It is. And uh, Before we do that, before you get it. started, yeah. I just wanted to, last time I, I saw you and you were on here, it was in the run-up to the Christmas celebrations, Christmas tree lighting, the parade. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful time that was. Thank I was you. really, really just, I was thrilled. The I Christmas tree was beautiful. There was nothing to apologize for. Who was that? That was one of addicts? I don't know who it was. Who but they, they were, the, the previous tree apparently was heckled the previous attractive. tree, yes. But it was, it was just a great street party. I just wanted to compliment you. Well, I really appreciate that. And uh, much like the Christmas event, um, we just aim to make sure that our downtown is the the heartbeat of our community and anytime there are large cultural events let's make it downtown let's make that uh, the the center of attention and um, we're thankful for folks like Barry with Allegheny Farm Landscaping Supply they're the presenting sponsors two years in a row of our upcoming St. Patrick's Day event and I, is today the day that it's gonna be like 78 degrees yeah, outside correct. <laughs> at least so, so I am hoping that that doesn't jinx anything for March because um, you know weather has been on our side so far for most of our events and um, remember yeah. last year St. Patrick's Day parade it was very nice and then the next week for the home show it was like twelve degrees I do remember yeah, we had, right? we had and that was in time yeah. yeah yeah and that was twelve degrees inside and God <laughs> knows what it was outside <laughs> that's true yeah. one of the things that we have taken into account with all of that in mind you know it's going to be beautiful. The weather's going to be great. We've already ordered it. Um, but we do have a lot of uh, large marquee tents that are coming in from Jefferson Reynolds um, that will go throughout the streets with lots of tables underneath. And uh, I'm, I'm sure the viewers are familiar with um, the patio sort of tall standing uh, space heaters. Um, Jefferson Reynolds allows us to, to rent those, and if we don't need them up to like 48 hours beforehand, we can you know get credited back into our account for stuff. So we got lots of space heaters in case it does get cold. We got lots of covering in case there is precipitation. So, um, but we won't need any of that. It's going to be beautiful. No, because you've ordered perfect weather. That's well, right. That's yeah. good. Right. Paid premium for it. Hey, give us the particulars on the times we're starting everything, and let's make sure we get credit to our sponsor there as well. Absolutely. Um, so it kicks off at noon, and we have, Raven, how many do we have? Like 21 food trucks right now? Yes. 21 food trucks, um, a bunch of restaurants that I don't need, you know, Stoney's wasn't there last year. Um, there's several restaurants uh, that are that are really excited about this event. Um, yeah, and it runs 12 to 6 p.m. Uh, in downtown on March 18th. And we have some of last year's favorite classics coming back with Gaelic Mishap and the Whiskey Before Breakfast band. But we've added a lot of other stuff too. Um, we have a silent disco that's going to be there this year. So much like we all have our headphones on right now, there's going to be like a, a, a big inflatable tent that has like the lights and everything, but it's silent inside. And only the people who have their headphones on can hear the music. So it's kind of fun to watch people look goofy um and it's a fun time uh we got axe throwing the boys and girls club they're going to be setting up a um like kind of a march madness basketball hoop set up so that they can raise some money for for the club um we'll have a kid zone and then also um rena center has come in they they allow us to to borrow some tvs for the day that is the first weekend of march madness uh god willing the mountaineers make it we'll have all the all the games on all day uh there in our beer garden so uh, a lot happening. Again, couldn't do it without our, our friends at Allegheny Farm Landscaping Supplies. Um, and then just going down the list, we have our, we have, last year we sold the souvenir cups, but this year we're going to give them away, uh, the first 500 people. So um, we have DRB Homes. They came in to, to support that. Uh, Ollie's VIP, they're always really big supporters. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they'll be there with a little setup right near y'all. We will have a tent right next to Ollie's VIP. Yep. Uh, we will have cornhole. We'll have <laughs> ring games. Uh, we have bucket golf set up in front of the tent. Yep. Um, I know we're giving away lots of coupons for the shop, of course, opening up. Uh, lots of giveaways to us as well as Ollie's. Yep. We're kind of pushing it both directions. And it's a cool thing, too, for them because it's the perfect time. You know, it's kicking off your season for, yes. for yeah. I business. guess it kicks off today with 80 degrees outside. <laughs> I, I guess. Hey, tulips around uh, our house are probably up about three, four inches already. My neighbor's daffodils have done everything but actually bloom. They'll probably do that today. Yep. I believe right. that, yes. Um, 
you know last year started off great fantastic weather i think this year it's already i mean the, the amount of phone calls we're already getting in early february for deliveries is you know just unbelievable mm-hmm. I mean, we unbelievable. were we were down in dc last week um and i i got a notification from the washington post that the indicator tree on the on the basin uh for for the cherry blossoms had already bloomed or already started to bud or whatever it yep. is that, that mm-hmm. kicks it off so they're all confused right mid-february now. Yeah. golly when when do the cherry, blo- cherry blossoms usually hit uh mid-march mid-march okay. mid okay. is earliest yeah april april, april typical <laughs> but they never do <laughs> the cherry blossoms never hit when they're supposed yeah. to hit. right it, ever they're right. very temperamental yeah right uh, and and uh, how long will the uh, the festivities on the 18th continue for? They'll run until six. We we bumped it back a little bit. Um, we find that our peak time of engagement or activity is usually from like 2:30 till 5:30, um, and then that last couple of hours kind of it dwindles off. Food trucks start running out of food, and you know people get antsy and they want to go to their next destination, whether they're having people over because you know. At these events, we bring a lot of folks in from out of town um, be- with the help of the CVB placing some ads all around um, the Northern Virginia, uh, D.C. metro area. Um, I mean, for example, our food truck fest back in October, um, outside of city residents, um, the CVB was able to track over 12,000 um, people came from outside of the city of Martinsburg. Um, so when you factor in local residents, I mean, we're drawing a pretty big crowd of both locals and um, out-of-town folks. So, you know, around that time, people start to get antsy. They want to go to their next destination. So we, we backed it up um, after consulting with the police department and, you know, public works, just make it a little bit easier for teardown. And we figured get more people in the restaurants and support the local businesses. So we're wrapping it up at 6 rather than um, 7 when we used to do it. Um, and what, what are you calling it this year? It's the St. Patrick's Day celebration. I hear a lot of people say, like, oh, the shamrock is happening yeah. or, or whatever. I'm like, it's so hard because so many people do these things. D.C. is Shamrock Festival. Um, I think the, the 81 they festivals. They have one in Boonesboro, I believe. Yeah, or... and they call it shamrocked. Mm-hmm. Like, they have <laughs> rock music, and, nice. you know, it's pretty intense. But, um, yeah, ours is just the St. Patrick's Day celebration. Um, I, I, my marketing hat wasn't savvy enough to now, come up with something clever who's providing the snakes in the city for Knowles to chase out of town how's that going to work <laughs> yeah i think uh i think you guys have a, a big pile left over from the ones we you can got make anything happen I'll be honest with you. just for a laugh I'll, we're all in yeah, yeah yes. i think that'd be kind of cool yes right? one of the things people said that they wanted to see was a big uh dunk tank with green beer with kevin getting dunk so yeah, he he had, he said the home show's too close around the corner for mm-hmm. him to catch a cold. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> it's a, and it is the weekend before the home show. The it home is. show the next weekend will be at the uh, Roundhouse. What streets are you closing down for the St. Patty's Festival? Yeah. So from Race Street all the way to King Street on Queen Street, uh, that whole block of Queen will be full of food trucks. Um, again, some more of our sponsors like you guys are going to have a tent set up. Yes. Uh, DRB Ollie's uh, Apple Valley Waste is going to have a tent set up uh the 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 tent itself with the um silent disco is our friends uh uh, at social connection so those folks are all going to have stuff up and down queen street with our um with our food trucks we have a kid zone there on martin street right by one of our newest um businesses the uh merely created she's going to have a whole lot of stuff set up for kids activities um and then burke street is where the main you know the main stage will be right in between with the blue white and the um the children's home society that'll be where the main stage is and then opposite of that in between habanero and um the law office there that's where we'll have all of our beer trucks um we have three beer trucks with five beers each on tap nothing can nothing bottled um, so it's all coming from the pipes. Uh, they all have a really cool um, offering, five different beers at each one. So and you bring your own mug? Nah, uh, no. Or pitcher. Or pitcher. <laughs> I know. I'd I like know one that, beer, please. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that ABC's probably listening to this right now. So no, absolutely not. We have to pour everything into 16-ounce cups, and that's it. Period. End of story. Yeah. Leave what if like I that. bring a 16-ounce mug? No. We got everything's complimentary, and you can take one of the recyclables home. It cuts home. down on litter. No, oh, we got five hundred of the of the reusable ones. All right, they're lovely. I should have brought them here. Yeah, that would have been a good, a, a good. How many How many people do you anticipate coming to the event? I would anticipate that we're probably looking at at least I, on the low end. I'd say fifteen thousand people. Um, 
So, you know, parking becomes the next question, I'm sure. Um, it's free all day. Um, we actually have a brand new municipal lot right across from the um, police department there on Ray Street. Um, our friends, our friends who have parking, I'm still still unofficial but you know we're working with some of the churches that have good you know prime parking spots there to see what what they're willing to offer for the day um, might might even be a great opportunity for them to get some donations um raise some money or whatnot but yeah uh there's there are places to park i know it's not ideal but here's a picture of that mode. If, if only we had a parking deck like the surrounding cities parking deck for anybody who's listening we need a parking deck well, I think the man who could make that happen was just on. Should have just asked him. Hey, uh, how many of those fifteen thousand minimum will be throwing axes? Do you think? <laughs> well, I, you know, I know we're all talking about uh, capitalistic society and whatnot. Whoever's willing to pay the fee, I don't know. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting the way that they bring that thing out, and um, you know, they're always, always excited to to be a part of what we're doing. But I never really see like a crazy long line. But mm -hmm. then again, I'm, we're. We're running around mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. chickens with our heads cut off. Oh, on, on the old Tonight Show, when Johnny Carson was the host, <laughs> and you'll remember this, Mr. Bodwell, you're of an age where I'm sure you remember Johnny Carson, right? Oh, yeah. So, And this goes back to when they would run like the best of Johnny Carson highlights over the years, the 20th or 25th anniversary shows. They'd always go to the old black and white episode with Ed Ames, who was Mingo in the old Daniel Boone television series, right? Yep. Where he's throwing an axe, and they've got this outline of a guy on a piece of wood across the stage he throws the axe and wouldn't you know it the axe hits right between the guy's legs oh in the crotch oh now the audience after they realize what happens it starts to build in laughter okay and then it starts to hit like a roar and ed ames is in totally he's totally embarrassed and johnny carson is doing what he does best which is milking the silence <laughs> not a line uttered just milking it for the laughs Ed Ames eventually goes to try to make a break to get the axe and pull it out of the guy's crotch. Johnny Carson grabs his arm, pulls him back. He goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then he, he, he has his own axe he's supposed to throw. He begins doing like this fake sharpening of the axe. Oh While the laughter's building, Johnny looks at Ed Ames and goes, I didn't know you were Jewish. And then the crowd just erupts <laughs> for the whole brisk joke that he's, uh, he's, he's doing right there. It's, if you look it up on YouTube, it's a classic Johnny Carson best of right there. And anytime we have axe throwing yeah. events, I always think of that episode. Gilstrap, you know exactly what I know. About. I know exactly, and I participated in an axe throwing thing at. Is um, that voluntary or non voluntary? Um, well, I was running, but it, no, it, it, was, it was at an event at Berkeley Springs. The trick is to let go of the axe at the at the top of the arc. Okay. Don't don't. It's not a baseball. Don't follow through. Yeah, don't yeah. follow through. Let it go at the very top, and, and you'll hit. So you don't hit yourself with the axe. Right. Well, th that was not complete. You're really bad if you can hit yourself with an axe <laughs> with a little hatchet. But. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's pretty cool. Any idea what that costs? Uh, I think it's probably somewhere like $5, $5, $10 to have a, few, have a few hacks at it. Okay, so you did this last year, yep. and uh, this was under direct orders of our Irish mayor, <laughs> Knuckles Knowles. Yeah. He said, give me some events and make one of them a St. Patrick's Day Festival. Yep, yep. What did last year teach you that helps make this one a little bit more efficient, better, yeah. whatever? That's a great question, and I'm glad you asked because I'm sure you know we'll have a lot of folks that came last year and would complain of the, the layout of the beer uh, pouring stations. Um, and I always like to say, you know, when you close these streets down, we have no chance at a dress rehearsal. You know, every single event we make improvements and we try to build on what we did the last time. Um, and we didn't expect that many people last year. So it was a great learning curve. Um, last year we had it like the intersection of Burke and Queen Street. Each of the three, like there was the stage and then each of the three little intersections, we had a beer station where you could you have to buy tickets and then exchange that for a beer. So I had three terminals at each one, but you know there wasn't enough signage there, there wasn't enough communication. So people were all getting in one line and thinking they could only buy from that place when really your ticket gets you at all three. So the way that we did, we did it at the Food Truck Fest this time, um, and the way we're gonna lay it out this year is you, know, you come into that intersection of uh, West Burke Street where Habanero and um, the law office is, um, and there's going to be three terminals to get your tickets. So there's three lines, cash card both, um, that you can line up in. So that'll help alleviate the line. And then from there, you go behind, and you can go at any of these places. So it's a little more free-flowing. You get your ticket, and you can just walk around in the – it's not the whole – 
format, the whole downtown, so to speak, that day is the beer garden. Um, like you don't have to keep your beer in that one little block, but you know that's that's our big improvement. I really hope works. Uh, we have all the they'll have cornhole back in there. They'll have some entertainment stuff. We'll have uh, at least three TVs. I think Ollie's they're going to bring some too. Yes, yes. So we'll have a lot of TVs back in there to hang out and watch the basketball games while you have your beer and stuff like that. But I hope that that alleviates a lot of the traffic jams. I think it was mainly the ticket line last year. Right. It was just right in the, the crossing path. And exactly. If we can move that over, I, yep. I think it'll be smooth sailing for everybody. to. And yep. a friendly suggestion. Yep. I don't know if they were there last year. If they were, I didn't see them. Maps. You don't know Mm -hmm. what you don't know. Yep. So you walk past, is this where I want to get my meal or is this? Right. It would be nice to know what is where and and what they serve. And that was one of the big things that we we tried to accomplish at the Christmas event. Um, When you walk in, we have uh, at every intersection, and we're actually going to have some fencing this time, so it'll kind of funnel people into one entryway, so to speak, so it's not just, you know herding cats um and there we have a little uh sandwich board at each place that has a a map of the event and it has a little uh little preface that uh it's actually a leprechaun raven did a good job um and he's saying he has a little air bubble it says you know here's the layout of the event here's where all the food trucks all the entertainment is um but also if you are to leave the area with alcohol in your hand outside of this fenced in area you are subject to prosecution of the law you know it is within the the parameters of our event so it's a it's a great great uh footnote there that we hopefully will address this year with with some better signage um and communication leading up to it too do you need more volunteers always and uh because i told you i'd ask jim because we're on here uh thanks jim jim's always looking out for me uh and because we're on here today we'll make sure that we put out another post we sent out uh on our e-blast um a few weeks ago and we got a lot of people a lot of people like to and i i think this is great a lot of people like to grab a a time slot and they'll say i'll take all nine for that time slot because all my friends are coming and we're all going to do it together um which i just think is great that's the way to volunteer that's the way to you know enjoy an event everybody kind of rally around and we'll do it together Mm -hmm. um so there are a couple of spaces um available but because jim asked we'll make sure we get a post out today that shares all that stuff on our facebook page how many uh how many business members do you guys have or how many members are there of main street martinsburg well another great question we are on on march 8th we have a downtown business redevelopment um kind of seminar where we're sharing a lot of data that we got from a recent survey um and we're kind of going to be doing a a restructure if you will of our membership um and you know basically our district downtown encapsulates uh where aspen hall is in the north um west of tuskegee where the railroad tracks are east where the railroad tracks are on water street and then down by boydville so there's a lot in between there Um, And what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to get away from it being kind of business association model where you have to pay a fee to be a part of our Main Street. If you're in that district, you're a part of the district. You know what I mean? You're a part of Main Street and we'll support you. Um, And if you're outside of the district and you want to support the efforts that we're having, um, sponsorship is a great um, a great exchange of advertising and then you know you're supporting our our organization so a little bit more on that on march 8th but we're hoping um through some other avenues with uh you know kind of a a passport sort of idea that we're going to grow our membership on an individual grassroots uh you know level so that we can get more buy-in from the people in the county the people in the eastern panhandle rather than you know nickel and diamond our businesses downtown what is uh, what is the cost of uh, membership it's going to be, uh, we're still, you know, just depending on fees and stuff like that to do it digitally um, to unlock some of this stuff uh, between 30 and $35 annually. And you'll get uh, several hundred, if not $1,000 uh, value. And what we're trying to do is add in kind of like how the sports books, you know, or the sports local high schools, you have those little discount cards. You be, become a member, so we're hoping that we'll have enough participation from downtown businesses that you'll have over nine hundred dollars worth of value and coming downtown and redeeming these points. And uh, once you 
redeem your points. You'll enter for a chance to get something at our, our food truck fest. Our wine fest is right around the corner. Uh, maybe those people that have shopped downtown enough, they get you know a discount on on their admission at wine fest. Uh, so um, we think that thirty dollars to support us and to you know be a part of what we're doing is a pretty good value. Robbie Blair is our guest here from Main Street, Martinsburg. Robbie, Barry, and Raven in studio. We're talking about St. Patrick's Day on March the 18th. Barry, give me some landscaping advice here for our audience right now as we're getting ready to head into the spring months. Landscaping advice. Come see us. Um, (laughs) Don't do it yourself. (laughs) Well, we have a full DIY uh, set up at the shop. Of course, we're full retail seven days a week, starting right around the 20th of March. Where are you located? Uh, 527 Eagle School Road. Um, Full supply of uh, great screen topsoil, compost, uh, anything you possibly need to get your gardens going for the year. Uh, Hardwood, bulk mulch, uh, decorative rock flagstones, uh, pavers, by all means, if you jump into it and it's a little too much, we have full uh, crews for installment. Um, Yeah, by all means, we either help you explain how to put it in or we can always show up and do it for you. And what's your number, sir? Uh, 304-262-4500 or AlleghenyFarm.com. AlleghenyFarm.com. And is that an A-L-L-E-G-A-N-Y or G-H-E-N-Y? E-N-Y. Yes, sir. All right, very good. And, And Raven, what are you up to before we get to summer? Before the summer? Yeah, you you know, it, it doesn't just end with St. Patrick's Day. It doesn't. We go into Wine Fest, obviously. After, oh, sorry. Yeah, John's mic. We go into Wine Fest from St. Patty's Day. And then I know that we have a bunch of amazing new a little twist to some old events downtown um, for everyone to attend multiple times this summer. So we have a lot to come mm-hmm. up with in the next couple of seasons. Delegate Hornby and the group were working on uh, getting a law passed, which I think he said is is getting passed, which will raise the alcohol content of wine by 1% to bring West Virginia in conformity with uh, the ability to import some Italian wines and things, which are just a little bit higher. It's not like they're 90 proof wines or anything, but they're just a little bit higher than what the current law allows in West Virginia. So this will allow even more wines, Robbie and Raven, to flow into Winefest. Yeah, uh, and we and on the note of Wine Fest last year, um, we had to carry a lot of the weight with our wine station uh, because we only had I think four in-state wineries, and we've already got one new one that wasn't here last year because they saw how awesome Wine Fest is, uh, and it's Kirkwood Winery. They're one of the bigger ones in the state, so you know we're really excited about Wine Fest. We have a, a great day planned, and then kind of what Raven was alluding to, the summer concert series is going to have a whole new feel to it um and we're working with some downtown business owners who again want to use the opportunity to get their name out there and sponsor a week um so uh it'll be really fun all right barry one more time how can people reach you for landscaping help yes sir alleghenyfarm.com or stop by the store 527 eagle school road and robbie a rundown uh, final review here of st patty's day the date the time the locations yep it'll be downtown martinsburg you can't miss it uh on march 18th uh join us from noon to 6 p.m plenty of food plenty of music we have some irish dancers coming to perform as well a uh, little bit of everything and we are doing a uh best dressed in Irish uh, garb that day. Uh, so make sure you come in green, make sure you come festive and uh, come hungry. Is it is it true we heard that the mayor will be doing some Irish dancing? <laughs> well, I believe he did last year. Yeah. I, I believe I saw him. I think he's I think light on be... his feet for a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's say, cringing Rob. a little bit now. Big. Watch your words. Watch your words. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having us.